Good morning, people of hope. Welcome to worship on this Labor Day weekend, whether you're joining us in person um, or whether you're joining us at home um, from your device. So we welcome you here. Uh, my name is Pam Dreyer, and I'm one of the volunteer worship leaders here at People of Hope. And we are joined today by a guest pastor, and we have Pastor uh, Nick fisher Bryan with us today. And uh, newly retired and um, headed to Pennsylvania today. So um, on his way, but we're so thankful that, that you're here today to share with us and, and to um, join with us for worship. So thanks for being here. Um, we will have communion today, so uh, if you are here in our space and we will have worship uh, communion as you come forward, but if you're not comfortable with that, we have individual prepackaged um, communion in the back for those who are not comfortable to come forward yet. And also at home, if you want to prepare uh, your communion uh, elements, that would be a great time to do that. We also have pr purple prayer cards in the back, so if you are in our worship space today and want to do a prayer request, if you want to leave it in the basket back there, I'll pick that up before our prayer time. And if you're online and you want to enter that into the Facebook um, chat, we'll pick that up from there and um, provided that my battery lasts on my phone today. So uh, we're hoping to, to be able to include that. If not, we'll be sure to send those out to our prayer warriors um, online. So welcome and please join us with our first song.
hands and your feet into our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this point in our service, we have our confessional prayer, and we come before God just as we are, right? All the, the bumps, the bruises, the good, the bad, and we confess before God all those things that we've done that we shouldn't and all those things that we haven't done that we should have. So please join me in the confessional prayer. God of all creation, you are great above all. You created everything. You are our breath and life. Give us ears to hear, even when it is difficult to hear or understand you. Forgive us for not listening to ourselves, to those around us, and most importantly, to you. Help us forgive the ones we feel wronged by. Move us to be agents of change, unsatisfied with an unjust world. Remind us of your love again and again. Ignite us to be your loving and faithful presence in the world. For you are the ultimate giver of all good things. Amen. You are loved and you are forgiven. Go and live as forgiven children of God in the world.
Our first lesson today is from Jeremiah 18, 1 to 11, The Potter and the Clay. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as this potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. The second reading is from Psalms 139, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You, You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my pain and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts, you who knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My name was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God, How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Good morning. At this time, the young missionary's message. If there are any children that are here for church, I would invite them to come forward at this time. Or anybody else. You're, you're busy, okay. Well, you, you, um, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do the message um, for, uh, for all of you, but uh, also for any children that might be online with us this morning. Uh, I'm Pastor Nick fisher Bruin, and uh, as you see, we, we, we have, uh, uh, today's topic is about the potter and the clay, and I thought, uh, what a perfect opportunity, especially if we have children at home or here at church, that we would be able to actually get our hands on some clay dough, play dough, right? So we could actually actually have this opportunity to work like the potter does, of course, without the potter's wheel, but like the potter does in our text from Jeremiah this morning. Now, I don't know about you, but Uh, No matter how old a person gets, playing with Play-Doh is a real hit, isn't it? It's a good thing. You can get it in your hands, you can mush it around, and uh, it's a good stress reliever if you need that. Um, But I will tell you that um, I have uh, an almost three-year-old granddaughter now, and she loves to sit down at the end of our kitchen table, and we play Play-Doh. And one of the things that we really like to do is we like to take the play-doh and we like to we like to make a pot or a plate 
So what we do is we take that Play-Doh and we, we kind of flatten it out and then we try to build up the sides just like this so that we have kind of a little, little bowl or a little pot like this. And then what we do is we take Play-Doh of a different color and we flatten them into, or we make little round balls and then we flatten them into cookies so that we can put cookies in the little pot that we make. So, getting our hands on things is a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to do because in making a little pot like that with a child, um, we are creating something. Now, is it beautiful? Sure it is. Maybe the eye tells us it's not perfect like, you know, a dish that we might buy in the store at Target. But you can see in this little, this little pot that we've made out of Play-Doh, it's kind of lumpy. It's kind of got fingerprints in there. But these are all signs of the maker's hand. And so um, this gives us our chance to be a little bit like the Lord who made us as we use our creativity and we use our imagination to make something that is beautiful in its own way, just like each of us are. So if you have Play-Doh at home, or if any of you have Play-Doh at home still, or if you don't, go get some, and then take some time and remember how to play in the clay and make something of beauty, just like God does with us. Thanks for coming up today. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Make of us, O oh God, what you choose, that with your loving hands you make of us such beauty and usefulness that we might be signs of your artistry, your poetry, your song, your finely tuned wonders of living clay in this world. Use the flesh and blood that we are to craft your beautiful image. O oh God, bless the clay that we are and help us to know our purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, I have something else I want to show you this morning. Um, since we have this wonderful text about the potter and the clay, I have a little object here that I wanted to show you. This is actually a clay pot. Um, I'm going to come out here. It's not real fancy. As you can see, it's kind of misshapen, isn't it? It's kind of lumpy. And, uh, and it was made by my third, third grade hands. And I've kept it all these years. So this little pot is, you know, like Antiques Roadshow kind of quality right here, okay? 
So this thing of beauty was made by my third grade hands. Miss Stahl, our art teacher in elementary school, uh, said we're going to try to make something out of clay. And it actually, you know, we actually made it out of clay, not with a potter's wheel like in our text, but it actually, we got to put color on it, and then it was actually fired in a kiln, just like real pottery would be. So I have kept this little beauty all these years because it reminds me of of, I don't know, my third grade creativity. But it also reminds me, and especially apparent to me as I've grown older, that this in some ways represents me in some ways. You know, uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. I'm a little lumpier now, a little bit more misshapen. Now that's how I feel about myself anyway. Um, but its beauty is still in its making of it. It's still in its intrinsic quality of something being made by my child-like hands when I was just a little one. So I thought about this, um, this little pot and the text that we have today from Jeremiah because I'm, I'm reminded that in Scripture, uh, clay comes up in many places in the Bible. And I'm just going to share with you a few of those so that we can get in our minds and our imagination why it is that Jeremiah would use this image and why God would invite him to go down to a potter's house to try and grasp a message about what it means to be clay. So the first uh, passage I want to share with you about clay that we find is really at the very beginning. It's from Genesis 2. Uh, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed man from the dust or the dirt or the clay in the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So I want you to imagine with me. The book of Genesis gives us two very interesting images of creation. The first part of, of Genesis, Genesis 1, gives us this very powerful and profound image of God the Creator who stands kind of over the universe, larger than the universe. And it's as if God is flinging the planets and flinging the suns and flinging the galaxies into their orbits around the universe. God is as grand or grander than you could ever imagine. How many of you have paid any attention to what pictures are coming out of the James Webb Space Telescope these days? Okay, that's what we're talking about. The God who, who stands over all of these things, making these amazing wonders out over the universe. God standing larger than, than the universe. That's Genesis chapter 1. But that's not all there is about creation in Genesis, right? Because we have Genesis chapter 2 in the passage that I just read to you. So as, as grand as God is in Genesis 1... In Genesis 2, we have a different image of God the Creator. Literally, God who walks through the garden. And God says, I'm kind of lonely here, and I'd like some company. And so God kneels down into the, the creek bed and takes God's hands and molds the clay, the dirt, into the form of a human being. And then kneels over that human being, God's face touching the clay that he has formed. And if you can imagine mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, blowing God's breath into that, that created piece of clay to give it life. So we have two amazing images. God who stands over the universe, flinging it in being. And then God who with great intimacy kneels down in the clay and the dirt and blows the breath of life into that clay. Is it any wonder that in Jeremiah, the Lord invites Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house to see the clay being made into the form that the potter makes it? It's not a surprise at all. There's another image in Scripture that I'd like to share with you, and that's from 2 Corinthians. And that is where the Apostle Paul 
in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 7, has, says this, and it's one of my favorite passages in Scripture. He says, but we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. So St. Paul here makes, helps us see a distinction between who God is and who we are. You know what one of the definitions of sin is? Uh, sin is where we start thinking we're God. <laughs> where we think we are the maker, we are the creator, we are the all-powerful being. And it doesn't take long in life to figure out that we aren't, right? And sometimes we have to find that out the hard way. Well, Paul does us a favor here by reminding us, you know what, there is a distinction. God is God, and thank heavens we are not. We are clay. But in that clay, the clay pot, the clay jar that we are, there is beauty too. There is still a treasure too. So we don't have to be the creator because we get to be the created. And that is a treasure and a beautiful thing. And let me tell you, it takes all the pressure off if you don't have to be God and I don't have to be God. Another passage that I'd like to share with you about how how clay is used in scripture and this is quite a fascinating piece it's from john the gospel of john chapter 9 verses 1 through 6 and this is a story where jesus is healing somebody you may recognize it as he walked along he saw a man blind from birth his disciples asked him rabbi who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So now comes the healing. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud clay with his saliva and then he spread the mud on the man's eyes now think about that does that remind you of any any of the stories that we've talked about so far this morning remember that intimate act of god in genesis 2 kneeling down in the mud and the clay of the riverbed to make the human form and here in the gospel of john jesus Kneels down in the mud, <laughs> uses his own spit to make that mud clay so that he can smear it on the eyes of the blind man to do what? To recreate health, sight, and vision so that the man born blind might see again the clay. It's in the clay, this beauty, this treasure, this majesty. Now, like I said, the older I become, <laughs> the more I feel like this little clay pot that I made when I was a third grader, lumpy <laughs> and kind of misshapen, no longer perfect like, like that childhood form that I once imagined myself as much closer to God's perfection. I am reminded of that because even though I don't feel perfection, even though I don't feel like I am that beautiful form anymore, I'm reminded that because I am clay and you are clay, baked into us is what God intended all along. I'm going to show you another piece of clay pot that I have brought along today. And this, my friends, is the real deal. This is uh, a, clay, a clay chalice that was thrown on a potter's wheel 
I think I got it at a Renaissance festival many, many years ago. Um, but I got this when I was a student in seminary. And at that point in my career, looking forward to all the years that I would be a pastor. And so over the last 35 years, when I was a pastor, frequently I had opportunity to use this as a chalice for what? For the Holy Communion. Both are vessels, aren't they? I could pour something in here. I could pour something in here, right? Even though I see myself more like this these days, I need to remind myself, and I need to remind you, that the Spirit of God, Jesus himself, gets poured into you and me every single day all the time it doesn't matter the shape of our vessel because what makes this vessel exactly the same as this vessel is what is poured into it the spirit of jesus himself every single day so that even if i see myself this way god sees us this way beautiful perfect a perfect vessel to receive the gifts that god has given to all of us so my friends that is what we are made for to receive the spirit of jesus to receive the blood of christ so that we might go out into this amazing world that we have as beautiful and as broken as it is and to confirm for everybody that we are the clay and god is the potter recreating us for good purpose for his artistry for god's poetry that we might be a new song in a hurting world May God bless you in that purpose. In the name of Christ, amen.
please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this point in our service, we thank you for the gifts that you give so that we can carry out the mission here at People of Hope. Mission to our community through um, the Dorothy Day House, which I think was just last night or something. Thanks, Dave. Um, through our world, um, through our Lutheran World Relief um, school kits that we're collecting uh, stuff for, and um, for your general gifts to keep the lights on, to keep our salaries paid, and all those things that are, are needed here to do the mission and to do God's work. So thank you very much for uh, your gifts of your time, your talents, and your treasures. There are many ways to give. You can, of course, um, drop in the offering plate, but you can mail and you can text, and there are all sorts of ways that are um, posted in our service today. So thank you for the gifts that, that you give here. We are going to join with the prayers of the people. I'll end each prayer petition with, Lord, in your mercy. I'm on top of it, Mike. All right. Thanks for the reminder, though. All right. So I'll end each petition with, Lord, in your mercy. And if you could respond, hear our prayer. Dear God, we bring our thoughts and our prayers before you today. We're so thankful for the beautiful weather, for the coolness, for the sunshine, Lord, and for the change of seasons. And we thank you for the gorgeous weather that you've given us to enjoy the last couple days and looks to continue through this week. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we have a prayer of thanks for Rob's stable report from his liver exams. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we, Lord, we pray for good cardiac exams this week. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all those who have perished for our freedom. God bless them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would be with those who are fighting illness and are going through treatments. We think especially of Mary Herbers as she continues to fight her battle. Lord, we thank you that, that Mary was able to come home this week and, and re relax and heal at home. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we take this time to bring those on our hearts and on our minds before you. Lord, be with all those who are returning to school this week, be that teachers and staff and students. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we bring all these things before your throne, laying them at your feet and trusting that you will act upon them according to your will and in your time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now time for communion.
the lonely, and the lost. The first time the meal was celebrated, Jesus promised that it was for all time, that whenever the bread was broken and the wine was poured, wherever the story was told around a table, he would be there. Today we remember the story as it's been told a thousand times over. We eat the bread and we drink the wine, and we affirm that we all belong at this table and that Jesus is here. So if we come to this table angry, if we come to this table betrayed, if we come to the table divided, if we come to the table in despair, For this is a holy table with food to fill the hungry world and wine to quench thirsty hearts. When Jesus ate with friends, he took bread and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them saying, He then took the cup, and after giving thanks, passed it to his friends, saying, We remember Jesus' death and resurrection, our hope and our life. We break the bread and share this one cup. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. You may come forward at this time.
Please join us in the closing hymn. Yes, please come up and grab instruments as you're wanting. Adults, kids, yay. <laughs> serve the Lord. Thank you so much.